What's up, everybody? This is Alan Gallegos here with The Playbook on the Boise Beat. Today, we're going to be talking about a record-breaking Super Bowl and what the future holds for both of these teams. Let's go. As usual, I got my pops here with me, Alan Sr., and a returning guest from last week, my boy, Chris Webb, a.k.a. Buttagoon. What's up? How, How are we doing, guys? fellas? How are we doing? Doing all right, doing all right. I just wanted to jump right into it right here with the, as far as record-breaking Super Bowl. Most watched program ever, 123.4 million viewers, $185.6 million dollars bet on the Super Bowl with the state of Nevada's sportsbooks, which eclipsed last year's record by over six million. Pretty big time. Yeah, 50s came out. And as far as the betting goes, it helped that they were, had the Super Bowl in Vegas, of course. Oh, Everybody yeah. could get there. And then, of course, the Swifties all came out and forced to watch the game. So anybody that says uh, Taylor Swift doesn't affect the NFL doesn't know what they're talking about. No, that's for sure. True that, true that. Yeah, and you're starting to see um, sports betting become more normalized in the sports world. Yeah. You know, it used to be like uh, frowned upon to talk spreads and whatnot, but even on ESPN, if you you know you're paying attention, they show the spreads with the scores and the previews. You know, yeah. nowadays minus whatever you know, like the fa- who's favorites, who's not, and it's kind of crazy just how normal it is now. You know, and it's starting to become a bigger part. Only a matter of time before um, sports betting is legalized nationwide oh yeah i yeah, mean it's, uh, that extra... it the first game in vegas in las vegas because before the nfl never uh tried to stay away from vegas and the betting yeah, yeah. Dude, and it adds that extra element to the show or to the game you know like uh adds that extra dice on it you know games that you normally wouldn't have an interest in hey man in the past i could care less about the jag but yeah i got money on them if i got anything you know riding you know that would change it so yeah yeah and, yeah and even games that are blowouts let's say you know a team's favored by 14 and a half uh even a blowout's interesting because if they're down 17 with two minutes to go you know there's still a possibility of them covering you don't care if they win you know but you're interested as far as them covering your bet you know it makes everything exactly. very interesting but let's just dive right into the game itself because there's a very uh interesting super bowl I mean, very, very boring defensive battle for really the first three quarters until it really started to pick up. You could tell um, defense is starting to get worn out and whatnot. But um, I mean, a lot of missed opportunities early by the 49ers. You saw the first drive, they're rolling, they're getting downfield, and then McCaffrey fumbles, very uncharacteristic of him. I mean, penalties early. Trent Williams, not a guy that's known for getting penalties, one of the best left tackles in the game for over a decade now. And – he kills them early with penalties and just a, a lot of mistakes, field goals instead of touchdowns. Even the Chiefs end, you know, that they, they had two fumbles, Pacheco, and then an interception from Mahomes. I mean, Chris, let's start with you. I mean, that's just classic Super Bowl nerves. You know what I mean? Like everybody's Absolutely. everybody's jitters. I mean, all the stars are there, all the lights, you know, all the eyes are on you. You know, the whole week it's built up. This is the biggest game. This is what everybody plays for. You know, of course, there's going to be some nerves. So, yeah, some uncharacteristic things um, in the beginning. But, you know, I, I personally like the defensive showing. It was interesting to see, like, even that first quarter, the Niners looked so much better right off the bat. But, I mean, it was still only a touchdown game, really, even going into half. I mean, it wasn't anything crazy. So, even when the team looked drastically better, just, you know, classic Super Bowl nerves, nothing crazy popping off at the beginning I, I liked it i like the defensive showing yeah it's refreshing to see and pops you were talking about that niners defense was going to struggle and they held strong early on but what'd you see from yeah. them especially early yeah they did a good job and then pacheco he fumbled at the nine yard line when they were getting ready to score that was a big one and then McCaffrey, at least he, he fumbled when they were in field goal range but at least when they got the ball you know 
when my uh, Kansas City got the ball, they were on the other side of the field, so it didn't hurt them as much. But uh, yeah, it was a it's a fumble fest at first, and the defense, uh, 49ers defense, did look good. I mean, gave them a ten nothing lead. And actually, that was the third straight game that uh, in this playoffs that the Chiefs got down 10 points and came back and won it. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. And Every Super as, Bowl, man, they've been down. Yeah, and, you know, it was weird, too, because you, you're watching the game and, you know, you see the Chiefs get down 10, and you're not even worried at all about Mahomes making this a game. Yeah. We're coming back and winning. You're kind of like, eh, you, expect, you expect this to happen, you know? You expect him to come back and win, which is so crazy. And I think that speaks to his greatness, you know, but nobody, I think, watching that game felt like the Chiefs were out of it when they got down by 10. Yeah, man. I mean, that's kind of like what I was kind of going with earlier, that the Niners looked so good in the beginning. But even when you look at the halftime, I mean, it's just, it was a seven point game. You can't. And then you're just like, that's, then it's all Pat Mahomes from here on out. It's, you know, it's a little scary when you think of it like that. He really has that factor. It, it really is. And I want to get into uh, talking about Brock Purdy because, you know, a lot of people are going to put blame on him. And a lot of people were questioning him going into this game. Uh, I definitely want to say that. And we're going to talk about Shanahan blowing that 10-point lead, by the way, as we had discussed last <laughs> week. A little, yeah, a little foreshadowing. But and what that says for his legacy. But I thought Brock Purdy – looked really good out there, you know, throwing in rhythm with anticipation, you know, finding Brandon Ayuk, who's become their number one receiver on those 10 yard dig routes, which was really their bread and butter all year long. But, you know, throwing with anticipation, especially had to because their O-line was struggling. That Chiefs D-line really showed up to play. I mean, oh, yeah. Chris Jones, Chris Jones is a game record. And we'll get into about how many plays he saved, really, that will be talked about for a while. But he saved a few plays from really letting that game get out of hand. What do you see pops from that Chiefs defense? Well, I think uh, everybody's uh, ding and purdy for a couple of bad throws of guys wide open, but because uh, they was getting hit at the same time as yeah. he was throwing them. And so Chris Jones saved, you know, he didn't get any, any sacks. He probably saved at least a touchdown or two or some big, one big gain and one touchdown if he hadn't been right in his face. So uh, I think Purdy did pretty good, but those, def those Jets or those Chiefs, they were in his face a lot. They were sending all kinds of blitzes. Got to give Spags credit, man. He had another great game plan. To, you know, Big Pops' point, yeah, the OG, you know, he called it. He The Chiefs were there in his face. You know, there's multiple throws that, that he – he can't literally make that throw. He's getting pressured. You know, it's hand in his face. But, you know, to Brock's credit, I think there was a stat put out over or after the Super Bowl where it was like his QBR against the Chiefs was like 69.8, which everyone might look at that and be like, that's kind of trash. But I think Lamar, Josh, and Tua combined for like a 43.8 QBR or something like that. So it's like wow. he, he balled out, man. Like he yeah. – he did his part, you know, like he went toe to toe with them. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's, he, of course he missed some things, but there's some other factors in that, that people aren't, you know, really taking into account. For sure. And I think uh, it's showing that this chief's defense is finally getting their flowers because they started to make a name for themselves, this playoff run, you know, which is usually where you can really put yourself out there in legendary status, you know, with how you perform in the postseason. but they've been absolutely dominant this postseason, I mean, from their D line to their cornerbacks who top two, you know, two of the best cornerbacks right there with Sneed and Trent McDuffie. McDuffie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I, I noted this down, but Chris Jones and that Ch chiefs uh, D line, they forced a missed throw to Debo for a touchdown at the start of the fourth, only allowed 80 yards from McCaffrey, 3.6 yards per carry. That's crazy. Forced a missed throw for, on the first down in the fourth quarter with that nickel blitz. I think they sent McDuffie on that one. Spags, you know, he likes to do the zero blitz more than anybody in the league. And also forced that missed throw for the game winner in overtime. And I wanted to talk about that because this was kind of the story of the offensive line struggles from the Niners this whole last game and really, you know, showed their weakness. Something they're going to have to figure out next year because 
a lot of miscommunications. You know, you saw Trent Williams getting those calls early. But on that last play, which turned out to be the last play of their season, where Brock Purdy steps back to throw, and whether it was a miscommunication on the line or Brock Purdy not calling it out, they were supposed to shift right. And instead, everybody shifted left and left Chris Jones, the best defensive player on the Chiefs, with a wide open hole to attack Purdy. And so Purdy just has to throw the ball away to the right side, throws it over Jawan Jennings' head, who, if he has an extra second, could see that Jennings is open. But if you look at the backside of the play, Snead had slipped while guarding Ayuk. Ayuk was wide yeah. open on a post right in the middle of the end zone. So we could have been talking about this game a whole lot differently had they even given him an extra second of time. I mean, yeah. it's unbelievable. Pops, what do you see from that? Yeah, it's amazing, you know, how one or two plays can change the whole complexion of a game, you know. And this Chiefs defense, when you think about it, I mean, they're young. They're really young. Everybody's signed for next year. Only one that's not signed is Chris Jones, and you know they're not going to let him go. So we're going to see a lot of that Chiefs defense for a while, and the 49ers are going to see him in their dreams here for for a little bit. (laughs) Especially uh, their wide receivers and George Kittle. What do you do, two catches for four yards? I mean – one of them was a big first down, though. But other than yeah. that, I mean, they took the tight ends out of it. And all their big wide receivers didn't have any more than three catches each. So, yeah, and, and I'm sure. Play. And so the 49ers, really, they had a pretty good defense. Yeah, and you see, see they just got worn out towards the end of it, you know. Yeah. Eventually, Mahomes just got too many opportunities. And as tired as we all are of the Chiefs, you know, you just got a feeling we're going to be seeing this – we're going to see plenty of more of them in the next few years. You know, with this young defense, you got the best quarterback in the league. So, I mean, it's not going to be anything new in the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I think that's like a big, like that, those are like telltale signs of like coaching too. Like everybody knows Spags is, he's blitz guy. He's always been mm-hmm. a blitz guy. You watch that whole game, he's blitz and he's just man coverage, you know. Um And just to have those, like, little mistakes with no picked-up pressures, you know, things like that, not having that extra guy stay in, it's just didn't really set him up for some success in some certain situations, which is kind of Kyle's Kyle's forte, you know. Um, But I will say, you know, that's not to diminish anything from Spags. I mean, I think he – I think there was a thing that came out. He faced the number two, three, four, and six offenses. This year, yeah. like, and he, you know, held him to 15.8 points each. Like, he's he's that guy, you know. So, it's just yeah. prepping for him. I think a lot of coaches fell short in that in some of those areas. And they were saying, because, you know, we look at this Chiefs team, and all year everybody counted them out. Because you look at them, and, I mean, they're not very, you know, they're not very sexy out there, you know what I mean? They don't have the, the fun offense to watch, you know, or, like, they don't play a fun brand of football to really, you know, tune into but they figured out how to get wins. And, you know, you don't think that they look like a great ball team, you know, just from the eye test, but they were doing this advanced analytic that they like to use now for football is the DVOA, which is like the best way to supposedly, you know, show who who's the best teams. And they say that technically by DVOA, they had the hardest strength of schedule to get to a Super Bowl and win it, which, you know, maybe that's something, but. I don't. I don't know. That I think that says a lot too. This Chiefs team. It's special, man. It's scary. And I think the story on these Chiefs all year was this is their wasn't going to be their year. I mean, they started off really slow, and they got beat by the Raiders, and then everybody was really like, "Yeah, it's not the Chiefs' day this year." So they they go into uh, into Buffalo. Of course, they beat Miami at home. You know, in the winter. Yeah. And they go into Buffalo and they're underdogs. But they do, they go into Baltimore, they're underdogs. They go to the Super Bowl, they're underdogs. And like Mahomes said, Kansas City's nobody's underdogs. <laughs> yeah. He showed it, man. I mean, he he showed it that you can bet against them all you want all year. And uh they're still there. They didn't do it with offense this year, that beautiful offense they usually do it with. They did it with defense. That's what they did it with this year. 
And that's what's crazy, man. They, this was, yeah, everyone said this year, this, this ain't the Chiefs, this, we ain't used to seeing this team. Like, who is this? You know, are mm-hmm. the Chiefs dead? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's crazy. They still ended up on top. Yeah, I mean, they got hot at the right time, and that's what we had talked about leading up into the postseason is, you know, that's what it takes. And we were all looking at other teams, though, see which teams got hot, but we never really wanted to take another look at the Chiefs. We thought, nah, you know. They're not good enough, but they the fact is that they did get hot at the right time. They're playing their best football right when they needed to. And that's all it is, is just momentum, you know, and and the Super Bowl too, that's all it was. I mean, they had a 10-0 lead, the Niners did, but they gave Mahomes too many opportunities and they got too much momentum. I mean, that that muff punt was a costly one. I think that was at the end of the third quarter. I mean, that gave the Chiefs scoring position, but that was their first touchdown in the whole game. They had kicked two field goals prior, but that, that first touchdown came with two and a half minutes left of the third quarter. That just shows you what type of ball game it was. Once you let the Chiefs get going, you know, it's a snowball effect. Yeah, the, the 49ers special teams is getting killed right now because of that muff punt. They scored a touchdown That's the very tough. next play after the muff punt. And mm-hmm. then the big play for me, really, was when, yeah. when they came back and got that touchdown, the 49ers did – but they missed the extra point. It got blocked. So all of yeah. a sudden, it's a four-point game. We got a three-point game. All it takes is a field goal. Take it into mm-hmm. overtime. And that's what happened. I mean, given that four-point lead, Chiefs would have to score a touchdown. And they were down there towards the end of the – before overtime, but they ended up kicking a field goal because they ran out of time. But well, yeah, and it also came down big. to the fourth down. That extra point was big. And they were trying to get a touchdown, but they got down to a fourth down. They had to kick a field goal. So we could be talking about this game a lot differently had the Niners executed that extra point. You know, they're up four. And if they get a stop on fourth down, I mean, we're talking about the Niners here as Super Bowl champs. I mean, putting that pressure on the Chiefs, like, who knows how this game could have went just off a blocked extra point. That was huge. That one point was huge. Oh, yeah. It changed the whole game, really. It did. Mm-hmm. You could tell right there that was like the momentum, you know. I mean, the Niners were, I mean, I guess, yeah, they had the, they had a couple blunders and, you know, the CMC fumble and everything. But, I mean, they looked like they were in clear control. And then once the, you know, the special teams errors kind of showed up, it's just you started having that feeling where, oh, no, yeah. this, they're losing it. Like they're it's sealing mm-hmm. their own fate kind of thing. You could, you could feel Mahomes just looking over your shoulder, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? You just Grim hear Reaper cr- status, dude. He yeah. was just holding the side. Just you can just hear Kermit the, the Frog. Doors, man. You can and, just hear Kermit know, the Frog. And actually went for it on fourth down, too, instead of kicking a field goal mm-hmm. to get mm-hmm. that, that. And they got it with George Kittle, that three-yard little dump off. And so he, he did He did one of those Andy Reeds. He went for it on fourth down. You don't really think he'd do it, fourth and three. But it changed the game until that missed extra point. Brought all the momentum right back to Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, being a game of momentum, too, and just all the blunders, I mean, the Niners just didn't know what hit them because, you know, everything happens so fast. It's the Super Bowl. You know, you can imagine the hurt. I mean, the 49ers fans, what they're feeling right now, I mean, they've witnessed three Super Bowl losses in the last 15 years at least. And, you know, that, that's tough. You know, I've seen one Super Bowl loss from my team, and I was crushed, <laughs> you know, but – and I know Chris wants wants to say something about that, you know. Felt his team should have been there. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it shouldn't even have been there. So, you know. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to keep a smile off my face. Man. Yeah. <laughs> another day, another day. Another yeah, day. another day. But you know, another big loss too was losing Greenlaw. I mean, that's their that's their tough guy right there. You know, that's like the guy who really imposes his will out there and sets a tone for their defense. He does. He's done it all year. I mean, he's just, he's one of the toughest guys out there. And to see him, you know, he tore his Achilles, I believe. And to see him, like, miss a piece like that in the middle of the game, I mean, that was huge. I was uh, looking at a video of this athletic trainer. He's explaining that uh, the the tear that he suffered from his Achilles was really something that had been going on behind the scenes for, since training camp. They were pulling up videos of him working out and jumping and doing plyometrics with incorrect form. You know, not putting pressure off his heels, you know, fit on the ground. And due to that, you know, those micro tears were happening all year long. And so it wasn't a matter of if, but when it tore. 
And so for that to happen in the Super Bowl, I mean, that's just that's just heartbreaking, you know. Yeah, that's well, just part of the game, though. I mean, yeah, a lot of teams. Yeah, but I mean, teams. it's I mean, it's something to say. I mean, one non-contact. I mean, that that sucks. You know, I mean, mm. poor fellas getting hyped to run on the field again. You know, yeah. but <laughs> Got one sniped. thing uh, people have been kind of noticing too is a lot of the Niners players get hurt in big time moments, man. Like you look at the mm-hmm. last couple of years, they've been in big time games. You know, it's Debo, it's um, Brock Purdy, you know, it was Greenlaw. I mean, I think six starters from the Niners got hurt in the Super Bowl, just this mm-hmm. this last one, you know? So they're, I don't know what it is, man. Those, it's like they, they just get a little bit more accident prone on those big lights. It, yeah. it is just football, but you can't have things go that way if you're trying to make that that jump, you know? Oh, yeah, and everyone knows that if you want to win a Super Bowl, it takes so much luck in a sense of you need everybody healthy. And that is so freaking hard to do in the National Football League, you know, keeping especially your best guys healthy throughout the season. And if you can do that, you know, you give yourself a shot at the end of the day. But to lose guys, I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's part of the game, but it takes a lot of luck to win a Super Bowl, you know, having a healthy roster. And I don't know if the Niners, if it's from overwork or whatnot, and I think it – Part a factor could be is them playing so late every year, you know, making far runs to the NFC Championship, to the Super Bowl. You know, that's just that much more wear and tear and that much more mileage on these players, you know, compared to everybody else. That by this time, you know, they're a little bit more worn out than everybody else. So yeah, I think I, uh, I think the last four trips for the Niners, they've either gone to the, the NFC Championship or the Super Bowl. So it's like they're yeah. really playing damn near as late as they can be you know yeah that's so, three to four it, extra games two to three two to four extra games compared to everybody else a year oh, which yeah. is huge yeah that was huge for them there was one more uh that i was going to talk about as far as um miscues i mean we already covered the two fumbles and the interception from the chiefs but i mean let's just jump into this because we touched on this last week but shanahan's legacy i mean you're talking about how huge this is for him and how much it'd be talked about for him if he can't get the job done. We talked about the blown leads, whether it was offensive coordinator for the Falcons, 28-3, to or being the head coach for the Niners, you know, the 10-point lead he had against Mahomes two years, three years ago, you know, and then having a 10-point lead this game. And then two years ago against the Rams, the NFC Championship had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter and just can't get it done. I mean, you feel for the guy because he gets so far every year. Obviously, he's talented, but I mean, pops, give me some, give me something on Shanahan. What are you thinking? Uh, you know, same thing with Reed. You know, he was in the NFC with the Eagles, and he made five NFC championships and one Super Bowl. Didn't win anything. Then he goes to the AFC. He's go, he goes to the playoffs every year. He makes one AFC championship. Can't win any. Doesn't win anything. And all of a sudden, some guy gets drafted named uh, Patrick Mahomes, and all of a sudden, he's a genius all of a sudden, you know? Yeah, so, uh, no, it's true. Shanahan's got Purdy, and, you know, it, if he can uh, develop him like Mahomes, like Reed's developed Mahomes, I mean, Reed, when he got Mahomes, he changed his whole offense to fit Mahomes. He brought in guys from college to run that run-and-gun offense that he ran in college, I see yeah. an offense he ran in college, so he changed everything just for Mahomes, and and so uh, unless Purdy becomes a great quarterback, because you need a great quarterback to win in the Super Bowl, yeah. I don't care what you know. Sometimes yeah. your defense will take you all the way, like some guys get lucky, Trent Dilper, some of them guys, you know. <laughs> yeah, but other yeah. than that, you know, you got to have the top quarterback and. Uh, I think Shanahan's going to win his share before it's all over with. Like he's only been in the league, what, seven, eight years now? This is eighth year as a head coach. Mm-hmm. And if you want to count that one with Atlanta, you know, offensive coordinator, I don't know if that's fair for him or not. Yeah. I mean, he was, although he's the one that played not to lose instead of playing to win, and he has that bad habit. But I think this game, it was just bad breaks. I mean, Really, I don't know if you can blame Shanahan for it, but their special teams, everybody's blaming their special teams for it yeah. and their offensive line. So 
Never heard anything about them before that game. Yeah. And so honestly, can... yeah, honestly, right. like you had mentioned, uh, you, these days in the league, you used to be able to get away with it, like the Trent Dilfers, you know, back in the early 2000s, where you could have a decent quarterback or a below average quarterback, and your defense could get you to Super Bowl and win it. I mean, rarely you'll see a case these days of where you'll get to the Super Bowl because of an elite defense, but you don't see any guys winning the Super Bowl unless you have an elite quarterback, you know, and, and if you look at the foundation to a great dynasty, like Brady and Belichick is recent, you know, you need a great head coach and you need a great quarterback that'll last all those years for all the immovable parts around them. That's going to happen. You need that stability right there. And I mean, Mahomes and Andy Reid are obviously the next to do that. Everyone's putting them in that conversation already. I mean, we'll see how Purdy does in the next few years with Shanahan. I'm personally a big Shanahan believer. I think he'll be just fine. But, I mean, there's uh, some questions, though, about them not being prepared. I mean, Eric Armstead came out and said they had no idea of the overtime rules. Kyle Juszczyk. That's crazy. That yeah. is crazy, dude. Yeah, like, Kyle Juszczyk walked those comments back after he said something. But, I mean, Chris, I oh, mean. Yeah, of course he did. He didn't yeah. want to look like an idiot. He didn't <laughs> want to make his team look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Came like, oh, out, did, did they went that. through that whole, thing, that whole overtime thing, so I don't know. Maybe somebody I mean, wasn't listening or something. Yeah, I was going to say, they went over the thing, you know? But, like, there's a lot of, like, I, I, I think Shanahan is a great coach, you know? I just don't know if he's – I don't know if he's found his guy to get him to that next level mm -hmm. because, I mean, yeah, he's blown, you know, leads in the Super Bowl. He's He was the only other coach in an overtime Super Bowl, you know, and they lost yeah. that one oh, too. I get it. He's in right. the but – you yep, know, right. still like he's he lost Chiefs, that one too. He's both times. Yeah, and I no, it's you can always say not. didn't yeah, Philadelphia say go uh, overtime last year. It was yeah. Atlanta that one it, where he's talking oh, about in the Super Bowl. There you go. But yeah, the uh, Atlanta's you know and Pats. But the thing is, you could say, I mean, yeah, you know, his two overtime losses is arguably against the greatest of all time and possibly the greatest of all time. So, you know, it's it's tough, but. Shanahan's like, I saw this. I saw a bunch of stats coming out over about Shanahan, and he's seven and twenty-eight on third down in the Super Bowls. Like, he just it just doesn't go his way. Like he, I don't know if his if it's his play calling, if it's the execution. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly some of the players don't know what's going on sometimes. So I just, I'm not saying it's all Kyle's fault, but he's definitely he plays a yeah. part. Yeah, you can't just you can't just not put him in that though, for sure. I get what you're saying. Yeah. And like I think Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Continue. Oh no, you got it. You got it. No, I just wanted to mention that a lot of the third downs from this last week too, really the reason for that is because they were putting themselves in deep holes. If you look at it, especially early on in the game, their third downs, they were third and fifteen, third and twelve, which is so uncharacteristic of the 49ers because their whole offense is styled around you know, getting a few yards on first and second down. So third down is manageable. You know, stay the way they – Yeah, stay out of the sticks, run the football. You know, but when they were put in positions where they couldn't run the football and they were predicted, like, to pass, you know, there's obvious pass situations, that's when they struggled, man. I mean, they were shooting themselves in the foot. Obviously, Shanahan's not out there getting the holding calls. You know, Shanahan's right. not out there getting his boys sacked out there, you know. So <laughs> a, a lot of that had to do with – you know, those guys put him in tough positions to make some play calls. But for sure, I mean, he can't escape all the blame, though. I mean, you saw late in the game, they kind of got away from the run, which is their whole offense, you know. They built that offense around McCaffrey, and they got was away like, from that. There was and like nine plays. Also. Yeah, there's nine plays he did at one point, and eight of them were passes. It's like, yeah, I mean, I, where did where did C-Mac go? That's, that's yeah. where their offense goes. It's through him. Offensive player of the year, weird. man. Give him the ball. Yeah. A lot he of got things. The ball 30 times. He just, you know, it's just him, though. Nobody else really did a whole lot. I mean, he had, I think, didn't he have 22 rushes for 80 yards? Mm -hmm. And he had eight catches for 80 yards. He probably got thrown to, I don't know how many times, probably at least 10. So he was definitely involved in the offense, but it was just, he was the only one, really. Yeah, and when you take away their two big time wide receivers, uh, Samuel and uh, 
and Ayuk. I mean, each got three. They had three catches each. I mean, that's their yeah. big money. That's their big money guys right there. That's how they open up the field with those guys. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. of course, this all goes back to you know full circle about how good this freaking Chiefs defense was, though. I mean, they made him look out of sorts. And the big thing about the Chiefs, and you saw Legarius Sneed talk about in interviews leading up to the Super Bowl, but he mentioned about gang tackling and making sure to contain guys like Debo and McCaffrey. Because yeah. in, in previous games, and we've seen it firsthand with the Niners being a division rival with Debo and McCaffrey, and if you don't wrap up, you know, they'll make a fool of you in the backfield, you know. If yeah. you don't contain him in the backfield, who knows what can happen, you know, explosive plays. And the Chiefs did such a good job of containing those. You saw Debo getting knocked around in the backfield. McCaffrey, too. I mean, they were just beating up that offensive line. McCaffrey had nowhere to go. go ahead. That's the that's the big hole for him right now. But, I mean, you can't even really say it's that glaring, you know. I mean, the Chiefs just made it look bad because it's how good that defense is. So I don't know how they how they go about that, you know. It just kind of leaves you just kind of wondering about the, about what the Niners do in the future. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to build that old line, that's for sure, step one, and get better corners like the Chiefs. You know, they kind of laid out the blueprint for a, a Super Bowl team right now, you know. Yeah, I'm not sure how much uh, losing Greenlaw meant. I mean, the first half, uh, Kelsey, man, one catch, one yard. That's why they shut him down in the first half. Held him to three points, man. Kelsey, that's his bread and butter from Holmes. Second half, he had eight catches for 92 yards. You know, I don't know if Greenlaw was guarding him much in the first half. I know Fred Warner was on him a lot. Mm -hmm. And but they found a way to get Reed found a way to get uh Kelsey going in the second half, and he had some big plays. A 22 yard catch and run. I think that yeah. led to a their last field goal, didn't it? Was that yeah, the, yeah, it, that was. Yeah, I think so. Well, you yeah, after you know, beat, I knew you were gonna beat say up it. Andy on the sideline, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, dude, yeah, 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 just slap, yeah, just slap Reed around a little bit. Get me out there. <laughs> Who does that to their head coach? Like, what the dude, hell that is was, that? that was wild. That was yeah, he said was, he just told him he loved him, you know, but. Yeah, yeah just knocked, him. almost knocked him over. Get me out there. Come on, not out there. I mean, that was insane. Yeah. The guy had lost it, like screaming his lungs out right in your head coach's yeah. face after giving him a shoulder. Like, oh, what yeah. the hell are you thinking? You know, like, Dude, it was that was a insane. wild scene. Yeah, yeah, Reed was like, I was off balance. That's the only reason it looked bad. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's like, or else I would have stood my ground. had a solid base, I would have knocked yeah. him over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and he's like 280, dude. I'm like, yeah. he wasn't off balance, bro. Yeah. yeah. It takes a lot to knock feet off his feet, man. That, that's a square boy there. Yeah. Like, I'm physically assaulted out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I mean, but that's the thing, too. You watch the first half. Kelsey's not running like classic Kelsey routes. He, mm -hmm. like, the game, he kind of just, he's kind of like that quarterback. He just does his own thing and finds that hole, and then Pat finds him. But that first half, they weren't like, they were doing more. It just didn't look like the Chiefs' offense. You know, it looked mm -hmm. like they were doing something completely different. Maybe that played a part into it. And maybe that halftime adjustment there needed to spark some fire and realize what the hell they were doing. But yeah, it was vastly different. Night and day, first half and yeah. second half. They looked very out of sync, which is so, so different for those two guys who are known for their chemistry and how they're always on the same page. Like back to that game against the, the Bills where they scored all those points. In the final minutes of regulation, which actually started this overtime rule, but that game on their last drive where they had, I believe, 13 seconds to get a field goal, and him and Kel Mahomes and Kelsey just locked eyes pre-snap and just knew, like, hey, run that seam right there in that open zone, and that's just the chemistry, like where it comes out in moments like that, you know, where it's huge. I mean, no, even if the defense knows who it's going to. You know, to have a guy like that to always be on the same page, one step ahead of everybody, it's, you know, it's insane. It's truly two quarterbacks out on the field. It really is. I mean, you saw it with Cup and Stafford in the Super Bowl a few years ago. In the last drive, he just kept going to Cup. Everybody knew what he was going to do, and that's how they won the game. Everybody it's knew huge. he was going to throw it to. Just like uh, Mahomes and Kelsey, man. You need a big play, who's he going to go to? 
Nicole Hardman. I mean, Kelsey, yeah. Nicole <laughs> Hardman. <laughs> yeah. And and they saw that one coming. We're like, wait, yeah. there's Kelsey lined up at. Yeah, that's Rice, right. That's you know, and all of a sudden, he tosses it to McCall Hardman for the touchdown <laughs> to win the game. Yeah, and as Chris was saying, he didn't even know he had won it. I didn't know. Okay. Blew everybody away. He's like, who the heck's McCall Hardman? I didn't know you guys even had him. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. No, that's just, I mean, I, I don't know if that shows another thing where maybe that overtime rule is confusing i mean i know the time running out they said that it would have just gone to another overtime mm -hmm. so i don't know what that, that was odd. maybe that was freaking some players out i don't know but yeah i, was confused. I mean we yeah. all were so surprised so was he you know yeah, yeah. and when we're, the we're all like what's he doing he's running the clock all the way down what's he doing he's gonna kick a field goal you can't do that you gotta score a touchdown and all the time he knew that we're just going to go right into another overtime, just like another quarter. Mm -hmm. and, see, I didn't even know realize that. I thought they'd just go another overtime, flip the flip the coin, you know. And no, he knew. He says that we're no hurry, huh? Yeah, we and I think touchdown here, or we can. We still got the ball. We just flip sides. Yeah, and I think a big part of that was the element of surprise. You know, yeah, which is huge because the Niners weren't expecting them to snap the ball right there. You know, or like they're like, right, is he going to let the clock run out, or what's going on here? And yeah, he's just like, hurry up, let's go, let's snap this play. You know, and they had a play set aside for it. But when he called that play, and I was like, what is he doing? Snap the ball, snap the ball, and they scored a touchdown. The first thing I thought of, Chris, was your comment from last week about Andy Reid's big nuts, and I was just like, holy yeah, crap, man! We were all dude. talking about the party, yeah. man. Like he, they're just dragging across the Super Bowl sideline all week. I, <laughs> it, it was insane. I mean, but what? Uh, I think what happened was grounded. Kelsey bumped him and knocked him loose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> must have. He hit the ground and he started calling some good plays because before then he was a little off. Yeah. Well, Once you, you heard know, that boom. I wasn't wasn't him getting ready to fall down. I was. <laughs> Coming out, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Open me up. Well, another interesting tidbit about that play, you know, the game winning play is they had ran that play last year in the Super Bowl against the Eagles, right? Yep. And it's famously called Corn Dog. And they they have uh, a behind the scenes, they have behind the scenes of Andy Reid talking about that play leading up to this week. There's just a little variation of it, slight variation of it, but he's calling it, you know, a corn dog with a little extra ketchup and mustard. But last year they had ran that play in the Super Bowl against the Eagles to take the lead. And then the Eagles either had tied the game or taken the lead the next drive. And then the game winning touchdown two and a half minutes later, the Chiefs got the ball back. They ran that same play for a touchdown. And so he's just really not too deep in his bag of tricks, really just something very recent. But you know, to run that play again, just to, I mean, it's a pretty good play. It must be. I think One, two it Super Bowls. was who he ran yeah. it with, you know. Nobody's mm -hmm. expecting him to go to Hardman that last play. And then, yeah. you know, you, you had uh, Kelsey going out, you, him and the other tight end doing like a rub action, and they didn't hit anybody, but it caused all kinds of confusion. Everybody went with Kelsey and and with the other guy, and then left Hardman all by himself. That's yeah, crazy. I mean, with the pre-snap motion of drawing him inside and then snapping it right as he gets set, if you're a cornerback and you don't have that outside leverage, that's almost impossible to cover. Yep, you oh, know? that's what happened. And oh, then yeah. and then you add in the fact that Kelsey's right there on the inside route as a decoy. I mean, Whoa. how are you stopping that? And that's what that's – what, I mean – you you saw it from both offenses when they were going, they had a lot of pre snap pre snap motion, you know, getting mm -hmm. that defense set up to be in a vulnerable spot. And I mean, it just so happened that the Chiefs were doing it when it mattered most, you know. Yeah. One thing. Yeah, I one thing I will see a lot of pre snap motion from during the game. Yeah. Usually they do was... a lot of it. I don't it remember kind of... they did. I don't know. I don't remember seeing a lot of motion. That whole game. No, and when they did it, both offenses were, you know, yeah. successful. The one thing I will say about the whole 
it could be another thing as to, you know, why they were caught off, you know, caught surprised by that last, you know, touchdown at the end with the time running out. But yeah. Kyle came out and said, too, he was, we're playing for the third quarter or that third possession, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. in overtime. And it was like, what are you, what are you playing for that for? You know, play, play to win. Again, it kind of goes back to the OG's point, you know, he's, plays not to lose but what are you mm-hmm. what are you doing play to win well, i think i think he put it in his uh defense's hands if they were going to hold him to a field goal that they weren't going to give up a touchdown because the only touchdown they gave up was after uh was that one right after uh that uh muff punt it's the only touchdown the defense gave up until yeah, the last, just... that last drive i think he really thought that he, he get a field goal Chiefs get a field goal, he's going to go down and win it. So, you know, it's one of those, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't, you know. If they go down yeah, and score I mean, a touchdown and you don't get, and you don't get a touchdown, well, then then they're going to have the third possession. Or if it's tied, they're going to have the third possession if you don't take the first ball first. So, could have went either yeah, way. I, I think a lot of those Chiefs, I mean, even Pat Mahomes came out, he said if we you know, if they would have scored a tutter that first go, we were going for two. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. they're they're ending it right there. You know, it's either yeah. they win or they lose it. So they they weren't even thinking of that third possession. You know, and I I get that uh there was only that one touchdown, but even that last drive when the Chiefs were going to tie it, I get they ran out of time. But if they needed the touchdown there, I think they would have got it. You know, like just that was yeah. the vibes I was getting from that last drive. I was like, they could score if they needed to. Yeah, but they were just they just needed to get it to OT. Yeah, you know? and that's that's the know. thing too is it, it's tough to even put that on your defense after how worn out they are. Because you know you could really mm-hmm. see in the second half both defenses were super tired. So to even take that risk of just leaning on your defense, I I think is just crazy. And even Andy Reid said he was surprised about. And Pops mentioned this to me, but. Andy Reid was surprised that Shanahan even took the ball first. Yeah. Well, I think a yeah, lot of people were. Yeah, because you want to be able to go second to kind of gauge whether you need a touchdown yeah, or what. They don't, you know? Or if they score a field goal, or if they score a touchdown first, then you know you have to score a touchdown. Yep. And so that changes the whole thing, you know. Yeah, it, like, simplifies a lot of things, you know, if you – if, that means you're going on fourth down all the time. Exactly. Go. Yeah. It's a four down game all the way yeah, through. We got to go four down. Here, gotta score. Down. But if you don't have that, you, hey, I might play a little too conservative here. I might play a little, you know, I might punt this. I might, you know, just go for the, you know, the, the easy one. I might kick the, you know, it's just, they didn't really have that assurance in that first possession. So it's just so weird that they took it first, you know? Yeah. It's definitely odd. I mean, well, you know, we covered a lot about this game. There's a, a lot to cover in this game. It's a very interesting one. But, I mean, that leaves – with the 49ers losing, that leaves McVay as the only head coach to win the Super Bowl with his current team in the NFC. I mean, Out of all the current coaches in the NFC, he's the only one to win one. With, with his, his current, current team. team. Yeah. Wow. So, Chris, let's start with you. Do you – who do you see as being that – next uh super bowl winning coach to compete in the nfc to even compete with this chiefs team you know it's it's tough man i mean i think it when you look at it there's a lot of good teams that you're like a lot of the offenses are kind of similar you know the packers they got a good young team the niners Mm -hmm. they got a good team the rams they got a good team they're all those offenses are quite similar in how they operate So, I mean, if it's one of those teams, it doesn't surprise me. It has to be, I think, an offense that uses a lot of motion, gets that defense out of position. Because if the Chiefs defense stays like this, I mean, they're the ones running the show right now in the AFC. That's the only team that matters. So, you know, getting them out of position, getting them moving, I think it takes an offense like that. So, if it ain't the Niners, I mean, the Rams or the Packers are my next best. I mean, with those offenses. Chiefs are going yeah. for a three-peat, and the Niners are already favored to win it next year. Chiefs, mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. got the second-best odds in Cincinnati. They don't really give the Rams or the Green Bay much chance, but 
Everything what do they can know, change. Once that they get, got cleaned. You know, it's all and all once that next <laughs> season starts. Yeah. They got and, cleaned out this week. They yeah. Had that Chiefs says dogs, and they got cleaned out. I think it was they like sure did. 70% of the public was on the Chiefs or something. Just the big bets were on the Niners, but. Yeah, but yeah. everybody was picking Chiefs, like all those mm-hmm. uh, the experts mm-hmm. and analysts, you know, pregame. And uh, Pops, I mean, let's close out with this, though. Um, what AFC team do you see knocking off the, the Chiefs next year, if possible? Maybe Joey Burr? Joey Burr? I think with Joey the Bengals Burr, or... anybody, the last one to beat him. <laughs> yeah, beat or, or maybe Herbert with the new head coach over there, Jim Harbaugh yeah, coming over. Herbert, Herbert. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see Herbert do yeah, it. Harbaugh to get that defense working. I think it's going to be yeah. a really interesting season next year. But right now, everybody's got the money on uh, on the Chiefs and 49ers. Those experts do anyway, putting yeah. it on them too. But I can't see them both coming back. Yeah, when's the last time we've seen the same two teams come back? Yeah. When's the last time we've seen a three P? Um, I don't believe ever, have we? I was gonna say, I don't know if that's ever been a. a I remember three out of four, but I don't remember three. Yeah, out I don't of know four. for three P. We'd have to look into that. Very interesting game. What a fun season it was. You know, it's gonna. I'm looking forward to next year for sure. There's gonna be a lot of competitors, but you know, thank you guys for you know doing this with us this football season. It's been a fun one. We got basketball coming up, but you know, then we'll be back to football. But until then. You know, I appreciate you guys for joining. I'll see you guys soon.